In this lesson, we are going to discuss transversals of equivalence relations. What is a transversal? Suppose that we have an equivalence relation on a set A. A transversal for this equivalence relation is a subset of the set A such that T consists of exactly one representative of every equivalence class of your equivalence relation. From this definition, in order to show that a subset of A is a transversal of an equivalence relation, we have to prove two things. We have to prove existence and uniqueness. For the existence part, we have to show that every element of A is related to an element of T. So using quantifiers, we want to show that for all A, small a in capital A, it says that this one must be related to an element. So we have the existential quantifier. We want to find a T such that A is related to T. So we have for some T in capital T. The definition says that it has to be exactly 1. So we want to show that this T here is unique. So how do we show uniqueness? We will show that if we get an arbitrary A in A and A is related in T1 and a is related in T2, where T1 and T2 are in T, then T1 must be the same as T2. Let us have a few examples. In our previous video lecture, we have already encountered this equivalence relation, and we were able to find the set of equivalence classes. So the two distinct equivalence classes would be this one. In order to form the transversal, our T here, is now the set containing 1 and 4. However, we can also write, let's call this T1, we can also have the transversal 2, 4. The set 2, 4 is also a transversal because the equivalence class containing 1 is the same as the equivalence class containing 2 and this is also the same as the equivalence class containing 3, correct? What we are doing when we are getting a transversal is that we are getting one representative from each equivalence class. So we can have 2, 4 or we can also have 3, 4 or we can also have 1, 4. Take note that the set of equivalence classes, this will be a family of sets because the elements in this set will be sets, correct? Whereas a transversal will be a subset of your A. So going back to this example, our set of equivalence classes, this is the equivalence class of 1 and 4. That's one way to write it. But our transversal here is a subset of A. So notice the difference. This is a set containing sets, whereas this one is a set containing some of the elements of A. How about this example? In our previous video lecture, we have seen that the set of equivalence classes would be the set containing 1, the equivalence class containing 2, and the equivalence class containing 5. So therefore, a transversal, we can take T to be 1, 2, and 5. Or we can also have another transversal. Let's call this T prime. We can also have 3, 4, and 6. Again, I am just taking one representative from each equivalence class. Again, in the previous video lecture, we were able to find the equivalence class of this equivalence relation. 
So therefore, our t here would be 0, 1. We can also have, let's say, 2 and 5. So remember, as long as we are getting one element from each equivalence class. So notice that from what we are doing here, transversals are not unique. We can have many different transversals. Next, we were also able to show that the set of equivalence classes of this equivalence relation will be of this form, right? So we can write the set of equivalence classes will be of this form, where R is any real number. However, for our transversal, we want to get exactly one element from each equivalence class. However, each equivalence class will contain one element, R and its negative. So what I will do is I will get the, the positive representative. But also recall that the equivalence class containing zero, that is the only equivalence class with only one element. So if we collect all of this, so we collect zero and all the R's where R is positive, what will be that set? The collection of that set is the set of all positive real numbers. Next, Suppose that we have a relation defined by this one. A is related to B if A minus B is in Z. So meaning to say they will be related if they are an integer apart from one another. So, so suppose we have pi and pi plus 14. They will be related to each other because they are an integer apart. The distance between them is 14. 3.5 is related to 5.5 because their difference is 2. So this is also related to 0 0.5. This pi plus 14 will be related also to pi minus 3. Right? So this is an exercise. It is an exercise for you to show that this is an equivalence relation. In order to proceed with the proof, let us look at some specific examples just to give us an idea. For example, how do we get an equivalence class containing pi? So what we can do is, what is, what is pi? This is 3.14 and so on something, right? Okay, so this will now be related to its fractional Part. So I will get this. This is already an integer. I will just get the fractional part. So, and that fractional part is pi minus 3, correct? So similarly, if we have 5.5, the fractional part, the decimal part is 0.5. So this one is related to 0.5. So now it's easy to see that 6.5, 7.5, 8.5, they are all related to 0.5. What are these? These are the, you call that the fractional part of your real number. So to prove that T is a transversal, we have to show two things, right? Existence. For the existence part, we have to show that, let me just write a definition. For any A in A, we can find an element in the transversal that such that A is related to T. Going back to this example, what is our A? Our A is the set of real numbers. Correct? And this is our t, 0, 1. So let me just rewrite this as for all a in R, we want to show that there exists a t in the set half closed, half open, 0, 1, such that a is related to t. So this is what 
we want to do. So we have the quantifier for all A and R. So I start my proof with let A be an element of R. We want to prove an existential statement. There exists a T. We have to construct this T. From our examples here, the fractional part will satisfy this because the fractional part will be an element of this set. So we now say take T to be equal to A minus, how do I remove the integer part? That is the greatest integer of A. So for example, 5.5. We know that our t there is 0 0.5 and that is 5.5 minus the greatest integer of 5.5, which is 5. So therefore, 5.5, that's equivalent to 0 0.5. Let's see if this strategy will work even if we have a negative number. So if we take negative 5.5 minus the greatest integer of negative 5.5. This is negative 5.5. The greatest integer of negative 5.5 is negative 6. Correct? Because the greatest integer function gives you the integer, the nearest integer to the left and that will be negative 6. So therefore, this is still 0 0.5 and that is positive. Now, I just showed you these examples just for you to, to imagine this a minus the greatest integer function of a. Now, from these examples, we have seen that this one will really be an element of 0, 1. I will just say that T is an element of 0, 1. Well, just to show you that this is really greater than 0, that is because A will always be greater than or equal to its greatest integer, right? That's how we define the greatest integer of an integer. And so we now have that A minus its greatest integer is greater than or equal to zero. I have just shown that this t over here is an element of zero one. Next, I need to show that a will now be related to t. How do we show that they are related? From our definition, we need to show that t minus a is an integer or a minus t is an integer. Note that t minus a is equal to a minus the greatest integer of a minus a and this is negative the greatest integer of a and that is definitely an integer. So therefore, a is related to t. Next, let us prove the uniqueness part. For the uniqueness part, we want to show that if it happens that A is related to T1 and A is related to T2, for some T1 and T2 in T, then they must be the same. Suppose that A is related to T1 and A is related to T2 for some T1 and T2 in T. So this means that t1 minus a is an integer and t2 minus a is also an integer. That's a definition of a being related to t1 and a being related to t2. Recall that we want to end up with t1 equals t2. So how do we make use of this? So this is this will be our given in that T1 and T2 are in Z1. Okay, so how can we achieve T1 equals T2? Well, what I can do is subtract T1 minus A and T2 minus A. Observe that T1 
t1 minus a minus quantity t2 minus a will be an integer because these two are integers. So we now have that t1 minus t2 is an integer. Moreover, t1 minus t2 are elements of 0, 1, right? So we can write it as. However, from here, this is an integer. This is an integer which belongs in this interval. This is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 1. So therefore, what should be t1 minus t2? For it to be an integer, the only possibility is for it to be equal to 0. So since t1 minus t2 is an integer and t1 minus t2 is an element of this interval, we have no other option but t1 minus t2 to be equal to 0. And therefore, t1 is equal to t2. We have achieved our goal. For our last example, we have this relation on R2. So we say that the two ordered pairs are related whenever A plus D equals B plus C. Again, it is an exercise for you to show that this is an equivalence relation. Next, we want to show that this is a transversal for this relation. So let's prove the existence. We want to show that for any A in our set A, there exists a T in capital T such that A is related to T. Our A here is R2, so an arbitrary element in R2 would be an ordered pair. So let me just write for all A, B in R2, there exists an element of T. But our T is of this form. The elements are the ordered pairs wherein the first coordinate is 0. So we want to find... 0 d element of t such that a b would be related to 0 d we have a quantifier for all a b so we'll start our proof with let a b be in r2 and we want to find we want to find what this d is we want to find a d such that a b will be related to 0 d. Now let's work backwards. A b being related to 0 d by definition means that a plus d is equal to b plus 0. What we want is to solve for d, right? So therefore, our d here is equal to a minus b. So I will now Take that to be my D, so I will continue with my proof. Take D to be equal to B minus A. And we will now show that this will be true. I already have D equals A minus B, so I will just write this. A plus D is equal to B plus 0, and so AB is equivalent to 0 d so there you have a plus d is equal to b plus 0 and that's exactly what we want to achieve here next for uniqueness for uniqueness we assume that there exist two elements just write the definition the general definition if a is related to T1 and A is related to T2 for some T1 and T2 in T, then T1 must be equal to T2. So in our scenario, this will be for arbitrary elements in R2 if it happens that AB is related to 0 d1 and ab 
is related to 0 d2 then 0 d1 must be the same as 0 d2 but this would mean that d1 is equal to d2 right so again I will just start with let a b b in r2 suppose that a b is related to 0 d1 and a b is related to 0 d2 from our definition of equivalence classes a plus d1 equals b plus 0 and a plus d2 is also equal to b plus 0 and therefore just by looking at this one if we solve for d1 and d2 they will be both equal to b minus a d1 it's the same as d2 and they are both equal to b minus a so that proves the uniqueness